Thank you, Sean. Um, yes, my first task is to introduce John Morgan, the Chair of MeWatch Health Aboriginal Corporation, and Juliet Mundy, the Director of Public Health for the MeWatch Aborig Health Aboriginal Corporation, with whom I've had the privilege of working for the last couple of years on this project. So um, we'll engage in some more conversation in a moment after I've briefly outlined the work that we've been doing together. Um, I feel extremely privileged to have worked in this setting and to have been part of the work of the University of Melbourne's partnership with the Yothu Yindi Foundation. And arising out of that has grown this partnership with MeWatch Health Aboriginal Corporation and the Melbourne Dental School. Now, I believe we've got some slides that we might... Um, there you go. So just there's a bit more information on the slides perhaps than I'm going to say, just so that we stick to time. Um, the partnership began in 2016 and um, arose out of the recognition at MeWatch that oral health was of considerable concern in this region and that they would like to use the opportunity to work with the university to, to try to address these issues. Um, this has been a MeWatch-led ide problem identification and the partnership, um, while we have bought some capacity to MeWatch, has been focused on the issues that MeWatch have identified locally because uh, local people are the best experts in their own issues. So, whoops, I made the first mistake. Sorry. Why oral health? Now, this next slide might... Has it come up? No. Try now. There you go. Sorry if this next slide's a little confronting for you, but what I wanted to point out that the, is that the conditions you see in these photographs are very, very common in this region. Oral health is not well dealt with anywhere in Australia, but it's particularly bad in Indigenous communities. The picture at the top is a photograph of a young girl about six years old who has a fistula under her chin. She had a toothache. The toothache has overwhelmed her defences so greatly that the infection has tracked to find a pathway out under her chin. Now, if it hadn't found a pathway out and made that fistula, she would have a swelling under her chin that would obstruct her airway. So dental disease is really significant. It can kill people and it does put people into emergency departments in hospitals. The challenge for this poor little girl is that she's in pain, she's got systemic infection, she's had no capacity to have that addressed because of the remoteness with, in which she lives. And then we start to think about the flow-on effects of that. She's awake at night in pain, she's keeping her family awake, possibly in an overcrowded house, so nobody's getting much sleep, and we compound the effects of that toothache across a family. And then we ask that girl to go to school and concentrate and learn, which is just about impossible when you've got a toothache. I don't know how many people in this room have had a toothache, but it's an overwhelming experience. The photo at the, the lower photo is again, a really common experience and a very small snapshot uh, t taken locally in 2018 showed us that nine out of ten children had such significant decay in their baby teeth that they required extractions and eight out of ten required extractions in their permanent teeth. Now, this is not a particularly scientific piece of data collection. It was a screening snapshot, but it was quite shocking. And though the flow-on effects of that affect things like diabetes, renal disease, cardiovascular disease, general health, and again, the, all the social implications. If we just thought about the problem of oral health in relation to rheumatic heart disease, we would be alarmed at the flow-on effects. And these are among populations that have very poor access to care and very little structural capacity to deal with these problems. So it's a big issue. So, what did we first do? Uh, MeWatch and um, I, well, we talked about what we should do first and the first plan was to run an oral health summit that brought all the players into the room to talk about where the problems were and what the solutions might be. Um, this was held in February 2017 and the Commonwealth Department of Health was here, the Northern Territory Government was here, 
the Homelands Corporations were in the room, MeWatch was there, and some University of Melbourne people and other practitioners from the dental world in the region. So we had a great set of conversations to identify problems and think about potential solutions. And out of that um, summit, which was also informed by contemporary health policy and oral health policy and the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health plan, we devised a health, an oral health plan for the region. Now, this is a first. It's the first time that all of those people have sat in the room and devised an oral health plan that now has approval from all of those organisations. So that's a first point that we're starting to work collaboratively. Another major piece of this program is the student, oral, or, uh, student placement program. The partnership meant that um, in order to increase capacity to deliver services, MeWatch could um, host some student placements. So final year Bachelor of Oral Health students from the University of Melbourne now come up to uh, Nullumboy for placement for eight weeks each year. Two, two at a time, hosted by MeWatch, supervised by MeWatch as oral health therapist. And they double capacity for that short time that they're here, helping to provide clinical services, do the preventive and health promotion work that our oral health plan has um, identified as needed. And it's, it's a very small program, but it has fabulous spin-offs in terms of two-way learning. We, our students add capacity to the work that MeWatch can do and the access that people have to oral health services. And for our students, they learn an enormous amount about working with Indigenous communities. They begin to be, get an understanding of what culturally competent practice looks like. They work with experienced practitioners from the region who can help them understand how the social determinants of health and the structural issues play out in people's health experiences. So it's a fabulous example of the two-way learning that we've been talking about. Uh, a little more of that later. There's, there are a number of also small pieces of research these students do to, inf do to inform program design for the oral health plan. So we've looked at things like oral health and renal disease, oral health and pregnancy and early childhood and how we might embed those programs in the existing programs and build the primary health care capacity around oral health. So, looking to our future, um, there's a lot, a lot more to do. The plan that we've devised is really big and there's an enormous amount of things to do and we've just started to chip away at the edges. We've developed an operational plan for the next two years that starts to work on collaborative service provision, embedding oral health in primary care programs, increasing health promotion programs and prevention and access to care for people, and also the thorny issue of fluoridation of water supplies and access to fluoride for remote communities to prevent disease. Uh, we should remember that dental de decay in particular is a disease of colonisation. It comes from refined carbohydrates and sugars, which didn't exist in these communities in, in um, times before colonisation. So in those times, Yolngu people had understandings around oral health and practices that ought to inform the way we do, th do things into the future. So one of our questions is how are those things understood? How should we be thinking about oral health for Yolngu people? people and how do we revive some of those practices that put oral health, uh, put their oral health into a far better place. Um, I can't actually see my notes from here so I'm just going to wing this off the top of my head. But um, we are very keen to develop some co-designed um, uh, evaluations and research that help us perpetuate this program. Um, the long-term goal, of course, is to improve oral health for the people of the region and to um, grow the capacity of Yolngu people to, to, in self-determined ways to address this. So while we currently have pathways into Yolngu culture for our Bachelor of Oral Health students, we want to ensure that there are pathways into dentistry and oral health promotion and practitioner um, qualifications for Yolngu people so that it's really genuinely a two-way partnership and we start to contribute to self-determination and autonomy. And I want to just finish today by um, 
using a phrase that has become the theme of GAMA this year is the, the, the notion that we're walking together to plan a future. So I um, look forward to being able to continue to work with the people at MeWatch into the future as the University of Melbourne's partnership with MeWatch matures and starts to deliver some of these things that we all hope for. Thank you. Uh, you and Emily Bookmark, um, how important it is when we talk about truth, treaty and the voice. We know that our elders that laid the foundation and first and foremost, I'd like to actually acknowledge the traditional owners here, the Gumach people, and also acknowledge the valuable contribution, the sacrifice, dedication and their shared vision and direction and drive, what it's all about. MeWatch wasn't just a concept, it originated from the Lanapoi homelands. For the record, everyone must be familiar with it because if you do your dual diligence and people get familiar with it, everyone comes from a land. Everybody also associates and connects the essence that you come from is your homelands. So first and foremost, I'd like to go through the formalities. In my role, we actually would like to actually acknowledge the traditional owners here as I spoke about but it's about two ways, so we have to acknowledge there's actually two, two laws that we are governed and we're walking and talking and sharing and articulating. So it's important that everything what we do and how we do, there is a blueprint and there's a footprint here. So one of the things that everyone should be aware of and mindful, it actually has been coexisting for over 100,000 years. We talk about a neurosocial science. Well, our elders actually are the are the actual creators and also have been educating, restoring and also ensuring that everything we do has got to be actually the essence. So in regarding to that, it's very important that we acknowledge the foundation and who and where we have come from. That's acknowledging the yutu, yuto example. Nama as an example, yapa, wawa and papa. To put that into contents also, it actually connects how important and how deep and untwined it is how we actually connect with each other on our everyday life. But it gets passed down to from generation to generation. We have a solution, we are part of it, and we need to be truly acknowledged. And also, in regarding to their shared destiny, uh, because as you know, English is not our third, uh, is our third, fourth language, it's something that a legacy is that should be acknowledged. So I want to keep it short, simple. And as you know, you've got to spend quality time and you must have a relationship, a legitimate relationship as a duty of care. Because we talk about legislation and a duty of care, well, we've also got a duty of care in a Yulunga world of viewpoints. We are the first people. We are here to be part of the solution, but we need to be socially, economically and culturally involved in being involved, that means ensuring that it's, it's actually been inclusive and, ex, and inclusiveness to ensure, as an example here, we've got to balance a unique way of actually delivering, communicating and ensure that what we're demonstrating and what we're actually witnessing, it's something that we know that it's an essence to actually continue what we're doing now because as you know, we live life here on a short term. What we would like to see and acknowledge that all the forefathers and foremothers and forechildren that have cleared the land to ensure that this has to be seriously, uh, it's got to be uh, ensuring that everything that we do and we, we agree upon, it actually goes back to the local Yulunga decision making, first and foremost. So through that opportunities, it gives us an opportunities to talk and sit and how important as I talked about, and, in, and another layer that actually coents and actually intertwined with that, it's also called the Murray, the Kutra, the Ngati, the Gamnyer, Ngapipi, Mumu, Mamu, Gamnyer, Marcha, Mukulbapa. Also works in very hell, uh, hand in hand and entwining. It also talks about the Wako, the Mumalko, the Rumuru, the Mukul, 
kurong, kato, ngati, wako, tumungur, mumalko. And translate that, it actually gives you also the understanding and knowing that it represents yuto, the child and baby. Mama is the mother. Papa is the father. Yapa is the sister. Wako is the brother. Mari, maternal grandmother. The mother's side calls and we call Kutra. Nandi is the grandfather and also paternal of mother's side calls the children Kamyer. Momo, maternal grandmother, the father's side we call also Gamnyer. Matmo, paternal grandfather, father's side, we call Chal Marcha. Mukulbapa, auntie, Ngapepi, uncle, Wako, great grandmother, grandmother's mother, Gato is the great great grandfather and father. This is the essence of who we are in our foundation, and this is who we are as our backbone and foundation. So if we're here to learn and offer, it's about truth telling and being honest, be traceforward and have an actual genuine relationship because as we know, lip service is very short and nothing actually eventuates and happens, but we want to celebrate it now because we don't, our elders don't have much time. So that's why we're talking on a behalf and ensuring that through Miwatch Health is community control and it actually goes back to the original custodians of this land. Thank you for listening. <laughs>